So today we're going to be looking at the soldier of the 1st 4th Battalion, the Royal North Lancashire Regiment, which is part of the 164th North Lancashire Brigade, itself part of the 55th West Lancashire Division. Um, on the 15th of February 1918, they were deployed to Givenchy, um, and they fought successful defence during the Battle of the Stairs, um, which, after an initial bombardment, uh, itself lasted from the 9th to the 11th of April. Um, that formed part of the wider battle, the wider Fourth Battle of Ypres, um, which itself was part of the second phase of the 1918 German Spring Offensive, uh, which was ongoing at the time. The uniform and equipment shown here is typical of the late war period. The service dress uniform is worn with a leather jerkin, and 1908 pattern web equipment in battle order, and the weapon carried is the standard issue short magazine Lee Enfield rifle. Uh, starting at the top and working down, we have the steel helmet, uh, in this case a Brody Type B with the Mark 1 liner, which I've covered in a previous video looking at this, so it's a reproduction. Uh, on the chest, the haversack for the small box respirator is worn, uh, the alert. Um, by this time, the practice of also carrying a PH helmet as a backup to the SBR had ceased. Um, the haversack is carried on the back in battle order, along with the mess tins suspended from the buckles. Um, below this, the ground sheet is strapped to the back of the belt using the supporting straps from the pack, and the entrenching tool um, head carrier uh, is suspended below this from the ends of the braces and that of course contains the head for the entrenching tool. On the left hip the 1907 sword bayonet is carried in its frog and the held for the entrenching tool uh, is suspended alongside. On the right hip the water bottle is carried in its webbing carrier. Footwear consists of B5 ankle boots uh, worn with the ubiquitous knee-length putties. And now we can take a look at the different layers of the uniform. The leather jerkin can be seen here. I believe this to be an original. Uh, one of the leather buttons is original, the others are replacements. Um, Great War jerkins used leather, uh, smooth leather buttons as opposed to the four hole buttons used on, on Second War jerkins. Um, I don't generally wear it as I think it's an original First War example, but uh, doing the photographs for this gave a chance to give it an outing. Uh, below this we can see the service dress jacket is worn. This bears the divisional and regimental insignia. Uh, the red rose of the 55th division is worn on both arms. And brass shoulder titles are worn. Earlier in the war specific territorial titles would have been worn as the 1st 4th is a territorial battalion of the Loyal North Lancashire Regiment. Um, but by this time of the war the practice had died off um, because many men were replacements who weren't in fact territorials. So uh, wearing the territorial titles was not uh, very popular and the practice had uh, been had essentially ceased by this point. The back of the jacket bears a red square and this uh, at the base of the collar and this represents the 1st 4th Battalion um, within the 164th Brigade. The stripe worn on the left forearm is a good conduct badge indicating two years good conduct, the man represented here likely joining up in late 1915 or early 1916. Underneath the jacket, the standard issue grey flannel shirt is worn, uh, and as can be seen, the trousers are supported by a pair of white cotton braces. And underwear consists of wool flannel drawers and a pair of woolen socks. And now we'll have a look at the contents of the webbing, and the pockets, etc. We're now going to have a look at the webbing contents, and we'll start with the ammunition pockets on the 1908 pattern web equipment. Each of these pockets is designed to carry three uh, chargers of uh, 303 ammunition for the rifle um, giving 150 rounds in total carried in the web equipment. We'll now have a look at the haversack contents. Here we have the 1908 pattern haversack and uh, D-shaped mess tins suspended from the buckles. This was a common way to wear the, the haversack when worn on the back in battle order with the, the mess tin supported certainly later on in the war uh, and a lot of extra items were added to the haversack beyond the rations that were normally carried in it um, to allow soldiers to be self-sufficient up to a point with a m much lighter load than uh, would, it would be um, carried with the pack and the, carrying the greatcoat and so forth in the pack as well. So first we'll have a look, look at the contents of the mess tins and then I'll bring the haversack back in we can have a look at the contents of that as well. So here we have the mess tins in their cover and we'll remove them from the cover now. Put that under the, uh... These are a reproduction set of, uh, of mess tins and cover. Remove the lid here. And the mess tins are used to carry the unconsumed portion of the day's rations, which is represented here by a tin of corned beef and some army biscuit, the unconsumed portion of the biscuit which would be issued uh, 
as part of the daily ration. Um, and that's carried in the mess tins on the back, easy to access, easy to get at for eating. Let's bring the haversack back in now. Here we have the haversack, and as already mentioned, as you can see, it's quite full, um, packed uh, with various items which wouldn't have been carried in the haversack earlier in the war, but certainly were later on. And I'll show you these here. Um, I've tried to, say I'm doing this slightly differently and actually showing you the items packed and then unpacking them. On the top we have a spoon for easy access. Uh, these are often carried in pockets or even sometimes you see photographs of them tucked into putties uh, for ease of access so you could you could eat easily. I've just got mine tucked in the top of the haversack there, easy to get at. Put that to one side. We then have a cotton bag in the front here. And this is the ration bag, the reproduction in this example, in this case. Uh, used for my displays um, and in here it's common to just carry the biscuit in this but I've put everything together in it so as you'll have seen from my previous video on the iron ration this is the soldier essentially the soldiers emergency ration that would be carried for use uh, if no other rations were available on the orders of an officer you have the grocery ration consisting of tea and sugar army biscuit 12 ounces thereof and a tin another tin of corned beef in there which would be kept with the soldier as I say and and it was from what I've read, um, the bag was primarily meant to carry the biscuit, but you, you, I've certainly read accounts of the biscuit and the tin and everything being carried in there just to keep it all together and keep it uh, keep it neat, as it were, in the haversack. Uh, little tin of oxo cubes there. Now these would be the soldiers were issued with um, uh, beef uh, stock cubes for making uh, oxo drink and so on. Uh, liquid beef it was marketed as or something similar to that see an empty tin there um but uh oxo was often sent from home and obviously it's it's good to carry that it's easy to make up something make up a drink with some hot water um using uh, using oxo cubes Got a balaclava helmet again a home knitted uh example um sent out as, as comforts for the cold weather a spare pair of socks Then underneath that, the Hussif, which is a small so yeah, sewing kit, uh, buttons and things and spare needles and so on in there, so that you can uh, repair your uniform and sew on buttons and so on. A white cotton towel, the knife and fork from the knife, fork and spoon set, uh, carried lower down, not as much need for those, so is carried down with a hold all here. Tin of foot powder, often carried to obviously damp conditions, uh, taking care of the feet was very important. And then the soldier's hold all, which was usually again carried in the pack, but in this instance transferred to the, the haversack. Bar of soap there, tin of tooth powder, shaving brush, often used just with normal soap at the time to, um, uh, to shave with rather than carrying a separate shaving stick. The straight razor in its case, see there a bone comb a pair of nail scissors with a little nail file built in a reproduction but a bone handled toothbrush there and spare laces for the boots so that's the kit that will be crammed into the haversack certainly in the late war era when wearing battle order quite commonly um, to mean you know basically means that the soldier can can uh, look after themselves for a limited period um, without access to the great coat and so forth which cuts down on the weight that needs to be carried and in the respirator have a sack have the small box respirator you see here this is a reproduction example as most of the kit in this video is uh, and included with that is the record card and repair kit if I can open this up which I can't Maybe. There we go. Record card and repair kit, the patches for repairing the respirator. And then down in here we also have a little box of Glasso anti-dimming outfit for use on the eyepieces to prevent them from fogging up. So here we have the service dress jacket and we're going to go through the pocket contents, starting with the top right breast pocket as you wear it. Let's open it here. So in here we have a collection of items. The pencils, a small coin purse which contains some French currency, Ooh, little clasp on there, a couple of 
I think these are 25 centime pieces. Uh, but you carry some British and some French change. Uh, small, small change, uh, little coin purse there. This is based, This the contents of the pockets here is based on a uh, photographs in the Illustrated London News from slightly earlier in the war, but that never, ne nevertheless give a good example, a good idea of what a uh, soldier carried on them in the field. We have here uh, the active service pay book, the AD64. Um, this is a 1917 print example. I believe this type was first introduced in 1917. You see the dates inside are 1918 for this one. Let me just find. Uh, we'll have a better look at this at another date. Uh, where have we gone? Here we go. Starting in. There we are. And for writing home, pencils, field service postcard, and the later war active service envelope. In the top right pocket there. Just move those out of the way. Uh, in the other top, with the other breast pocket, I have a box of matches. And those red tick matches, which I believe are from the period, certainly from the 20s, they have box, both the box and the cigarette packet actually came out of the, when I was working as builder's labourer briefly, uh, they came out of a house, uh, the cavity in a house uh, from the 19, that had been built in the 1920s, early 1920s, so they were around the period, and Golden Dawn cigarettes, Ooh, bottom of the packet's gone on those unfortunately, the cigarette packet also came out of a wall cavity in a house we were working on, so that was both quite good uh, finds really from that point of view. Uh, a trench lighter, this is a reproduction, uh, and a craft knife, uh, this is a later war 1917 uh, clasp knife with maybe fibre scales, and we'll have a look at some of these in another video separately, more detail on those. So it's all just clasp knife and lanyard there. Move those out of the way as well. Hip pockets. Again, based on what was in the uh, uh, illustrated London News article, a pair of fingerless mitts, uh, the respective hand carried in each pocket. Maybe other small miscellaneous items carried in there, but this is just a illustration for illustrative purposes. Um, and then in the inner pocket on the skirt of the jacket here, have the first field dressing in its pocket. Um, so that's basically it. Uh, the tunic on the uh, jacket contents. Finally, the soldier would of course be wearing his identity discs. The green fibre discs having been introduced to be worn alongside the red disc in August 1916. Uh, and as was common, the disc had been personalised slightly uh, with the addition of a small clasp and a six rupee coin worn as a charm. Uh, it's an Edwardian coin. So there we have it. Um, as I said earlier, this is fairly typical of late war British infantry uh, with the webbing worn in battle order. Various attempts have been made to reduce the load carried, although weights were still pretty high um, when, uh, when assaulting positions and so on. Uh, because of the extra equipment carried, wire cutters and so on, that would be carried in addition to the equipment shown here in this scenario. Uh, but fairly typical, and obviously, I say, I've researched this from photographs and so on of the actual units deployed with the 5th, 5th Division uh, in early 1918, and obviously uploaded 100 years on from that battle. So I hope you found that interesting, and until next time, as I always say, bye for now.